to the Whitlings prototype. My name is Billy Lemon Zest. This is Thunderbutt right here. She is ready to help with any questions that we come across. Secretly, she's the real one who's doing all the coding. Just link mentally with her, and uh, she tells me what to do. <clears throat> so, we still have a whole bunch of crazy errors uh, with our path node system. And that's to be expected. It's a somewhat complex setup. And I realized last night as I was falling asleep that there was definitely something wrong. There was an important step that we had missed when deactivating nodes. And so let's take a look at that. Off stream, I tried to do this fix here where to, to make sure that um, the two faces had enough things, but um, I'm going to skip that for now. Maybe we'll come back to this, but I believe that the fix I have in mind is actually a little bit more correct than <clears throat> just adding some extra conditions into here. So let's start at the very beginning. Whenever a cube begins rotate, to rotate, we activate and break all paths. <clears throat> and so what that does is it sets our renderers to active, and it breaks all of the paths on the cube. <clears throat> and so this goes through every path on the cube, and we get something that it's linked to. If it's linked to something, we see if the linked is linked back, so it's a two-way link. And if they're linked back, then we're going to break both paths, and then here we clear the possible node list. <clears throat> I think that's fine. But I believe that we're going to need a separate function. So handle rotate complete. Here we're deactivating hidden faces. And here we say if it has a neighbor in the facing direction, we turn off the renderer. This is working fine. But this break paths needs to be doing something different, I believe. Let's break out the drawing board. So, oops, I think what's actually happening here <clears throat> is that we have this node, and this node is on a face that is up against another face. And this is the block that was spinning. We'll say it was spinning this way. So it spun down here, and it entered a node on the other face. I'm going to draw it over here, but you can imagine that these two faces are touching with each other. So this node entered this node here. And when we, de when we decide that this face is invalid because these two faces are touching, we need to tell this node here to remove this guy from his possible list. <clears throat> Because what we were doing is we were breaking the path between these two things. But this guy was still hanging out in his possible node list. And that is not correct. So maybe we'll need to come up with another name, another function here. Pardon me, lady. Okay. So let's call this invalidate paths. And this lives in the cube face. So let's hop in here. There we go, invalidate paths. And so here we're going to have to loop through 
while node index is less than, is it PPNL in this one? No. Path node list. Although you know what, we could just do it with the first node and the last node like we're doing down here. I like that a little bit better than the than looping through the entire set because these middle nodes in the L shapes, we really don't need. They're never going to be overlapping other nodes that we care about. <clears throat> they might overlap if two cubes are on top of each other, but since both of these faces are invalid, oh. Okay. No cleaning at the computer, Thunderbutt. Sorry, lady. I gotta lay down the law. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. So let's see. I not sure how to do this. You know what? Let's just do a full for loop. I like that a little bit better. Just to play it safe. If for some reason our code is slowing down, we can profile it and we can see, oh, this is a little bit slow. But honestly, these functions do not happen often. You know, they happen maybe once every third of a second if the person is, you know, three times a second. <clears throat> very, very slow. Relatively, of course. <laughs> so let's see, we're looping through each of our nodes, current node. Path node list at node index. And what we need to do, so this is the cube that's rotating. We just decided that the face is invalid. So we want to invalidate the paths that each of these cubes have set up. So, We'll do a path node linked node equals current node dot get linked path node. And if linked node does not equal null, then we're going to tell our linked node remove possible path node current node. And that should tell the other guy that we are no longer available <clears throat> to be passed to because our face is invalid. It sounds like a good schoolyard insult. Your face is invalid. Let's see. So we got to modify our path node component. Public void remove possible path node. Path node to remove. PPNL dot remove to remove. There we go. <clears throat> and hopefully now. What are these errors? Oh, Unity errors. Sure, sure. That's fine. You can break all you like, Unity, as long as it's not my fault. Oh boy, how did I break this before? Okay, cool. So we got an error here. There was a floating point error when handling path imbalances. Interesting. So let's take a look at this guy here. What do you have to say for yourself, cube zero? So it has two linked path nodes, and that is not correct. I'm assuming that this one does have straight, okay. And this actually didn't either, huh. <clears throat> hmm. How about so? Okay, so it works as long as we don't have two things that are connected. But here, it's not working correctly. Now, I find it quite bizarre that this has two possible path nodes. 
back L face, which is this top one. And the right straight face, which is this hidden one here, you can kind of see the outline very, very lightly. <clears throat> so why does it think that this node on our right straight path face is bad? I have an idea. I'm going to delete this guy here. I'm going to spin this back. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Um, let's just move you to zero. So that this cube only has one face that's touching this guy here. Boom, there we go. So let's put a breakpoint. And where do we want to stop? Um, let's put it in here, invalidate paths. Dunk. Excellent. So this is the forward L path. That seems correct to me. And we've got three nodes in there. And I bet these haven't been linked yet. Right, because the linking doesn't happen until after we've invalidated these paths. So this was never getting run. Hmm. Could I just say current node remove possible? That might be a decent solution. No. No, because the current node is the one that's spinning. Yeah, okay. This is kind of tricky. So here we deactivate hidden faces. And then we loop through all of our faces and validate the path nodes. <clears throat> so maybe we could put this code into validate path nodes. So this is a face, and the face has either two or three nodes currently. This is the face of the rotating cube that once it's done rotating, we want to link it to all the other valid path nodes that it has overlapped.
But these haven't been linked yet. They still haven't been linked. Maybe what we could do is rename this to first node dot remove invalid path nodes. So, we've got two things, two nodes that rotate on top of one node. So each of these nodes is alone. It's going to ask if the owning face is valid. It is active. So if it is not active, I already have a remove invalid path nodes. L O L. Okay. I think we can get rid of this completely and just remove our logic to the path node here. So this is still the same problem. I've just been trying to track down the root of where we're not doing it. <clears throat> And I don't need to do this test in direction. I've already done this direct this test. But I think that if my face is active, no, if my face is inactive, I have to tell all of my possible links to remove me from this, their system. So while LPI is less than ppnl.count, And at LPI dot PPNL <laughs> dot remove this. And this needs a comment for sure. Let's see. So we want to for all possible nodes if this node is invalid tell them to remove this node from its list of possible path nodes. Not a big fan of this double for loop, but once again, 
you know, possible path node links, this is going to be four maximum. Well, I don't know. Maybe it could get a little bit higher, but I think that physically it cannot get higher than eight. Move possible path node. We don't need this invalidate paths either. <laughs> An invalidate pass was getting called by cube core, I believe. Maybe we still need to break paths here. I'm not sure. Let's test it first. Path imbalance broken. Dang it. Let's try the break paths again. I really don't think that that's going to do it. <clears throat> yeah. So let's debug this again. And we are trying to debug, I guess, either this, let's see, forward L or right straight. Bump. Oh, thinking, crashing, maybe? Eh? Eh? I'd say maybe 4% of the time Visual Studio likes to crash when debugging with Unity. I feel like it generally happens when I don't give a long enough pause. Microsoft Visual Studio is busy. Okay, well, we'll let you think for a little bit more. Let's go back to the drawing board while you do your thinking. <clears throat> so, the real problem here is that I'm going to draw these blown out cubes. We've got a straight, I think this is an L of some sort, and a straight here. So once again, this is the cube that's rotating. And we've got two overlapping path nodes here. And one here. So when we spin the cube into this position, this node is confused because it thinks currently that there are two options. But really, this option should not be in the mix because it is up against this cube and it should have been re removed completely. And the problem is we cannot... Oh, you know what we could do? Ooh. That is a possibility. So one of the main issues that we're having is when we begin to rotate a cube, all of these, the face doesn't know that it's a bad face until... until the rotate is actually complete.
So maybe what we could do is on begin rotate, we could um, apply the full transformation. So the, apply the full rotation, um, test for faces, uh, test face neighbor, I guess we'll call it. And if this face neighbor, if the face will have a neighbor eventually, then we deactivate that face. And add it to a list. And this is the list that we're going to disable the mesh renderer on later. Right? Once the rotation is complete. When the rotation is complete, that's the only thing we really want to do is disable the mesh renderer. Disable mesh and validate paths. <clears throat> but what's cool is if we deactivate this face at the begin of rotate, then in our on trigger enter, is this still? Yeah, it crashed. That's fine. Then in our on trigger enter, we can just say, hey, is this face valid? If it's not a valid face, don't add it to the possible path node list. And then once we've done all of this, we've deactivated, just set each face to active or inactive. Then we can um, rotate back to previous rotation. And then finally start rotating slowly. So it's almost like in memory, if I rotate a block right, immediately I'm going to snap the block to the right, do a bunch of face checks about where it's going to end up, turn those faces off then, rotate it back, and then let the code, you know, slowly move it. It seems like a viable option that would solve a lot of our problems might allow us to remove a fair amount of code too, which is nice because this is starting to get really complex. Okay, Visual Studio, you are out of here. Please? Thank you. <laughs> What's Unity going to do? Oh, Unity's just going to chug along. It's happy. So let's try that out. Our cube core has does have this has neighbor and face direction. I don't even know if we're doing using this find neighbors anymore. Activate and break all paths. So we've got our handle begin rotate. All this does is set all of our renderers to active. And you know what? Let's pull this into a separate function. There we go. 
And if I recall, I used that function in two different places. Let's create a variable here, because I don't want to type this three times. Set is active to true. Let's do a shift F12 and find out where else this is being used. Cube faces at face index. Okay. Oh, wow. That's where I wanted it to do it. Oh, boy. Same exact thing. Cube face, current face. And we'll copy this to our clipboard because I know I'm going to need it. Okay. <clears throat> now I almost forgot. Set is active to false. So this deactivate hidden faces actually runs on cube rotate complete, right? So I might want to rename this. I think I only call this in one spot, right? Oh, two spots. In start. Okay. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I might just allow this to to do its thing. Am I using this anywhere? Nope, not using this anywhere. So handle begin rotate, we are going to need to call activate and break all paths. Interesting. So our cube rotator We want to call on begin rotate at the very end because I'm going to be using Oh, these should all be marked as private. Oh, hey. And public quaternion get target rotation. So our cube rotator knows the target rotation. And on begin rotate doesn't execute until it is calculated. So in our cube core, we have a reference to the rotator. get target rotation
And then I want to apply this rotation directly. All right, let's do quaternion. Why not? Let's just uh, call a get start rotation as well. This is a lot of code without testing. It makes me nervous. I'm not sure if we're going to need these variables in here. But I do think we might. It's better than calling the function twice, I feel. So <clears throat> we are going to apply equals target rotation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, I think so, private, um, we're going to have a list of, what are these, game objects, actually, I think it's a list of cube faces, and we'll call this inactive base list. We'll create a new list in the awake function. And this deactivate hidden faces, I'm going to rename this to Calculate hidden faces. And instead of turning the renderers off, I'm just going to say inactive face list dot add current face. We'll say that it's not active anymore. And we'll call this hide inactive faces. Oh, we can just copy this here. Almost copy. We don't want cube faces, we want inactive face list dot count. Index dot um, set renderers active false. So actually, we're not going to calculate fit hidden faces in the rotate complete. We're going to calculate hidden faces in the begin. OK, yeah, we probably just could have used these functions here. And then when the rotate is complete, then what we can do is hide inactive faces. And maybe once that is done, we can clear that out. The reason I se separated these into two separate functions even though we've got two for loops that kind of need to run in parallel with each other, is that this number is going to be different from all of our faces. And secondly, in start, 
We want to calculate hidden faces and then hide inactive faces. And we probably want to make this public. Shift F12 is definitely a good friend of yours. <clears throat> Whenever you're modifying how a function works, uh, do a Shift F12 and see everywhere that's using it. Doo -doo -doo. So that was in our cube core. And this was our hide inactive faces. Let's move this into our public section. Oh, buddy. We've been working for 40 minutes, and we've only tested for about two of those. Hmm. Okay. Well, our faces are still being hidden, which I like very much. Okay. That works fine. That doesn't work fine, but we missed the one piece of the puzzle, and that's in on trigger enter if end overlap equals n oh that's exit. Or Um, this get owning face dot get is active equals false. So if that, if it's false, we just exit. We don't add it to the path node, possible node list. Uh, not very happy about this, but it's working fine, I think. <laughs> Dang it! What? How are we going to test this? Does it really still think that that dude has two? Why? So this is the L face, which is the hidden one. Is active is totally false. So I'm pausing it right here, and this is active is already false on this cube face. So it was set correctly. All of these other ones should be on. That's right. Aha! I think I got it. So this face has three nodes. Where are you at? Here we go. Now this one has no possible path node links because it knows that its face is inactive. But we also need to check the other face. If either face is inactive, then that is a no-go.
or <laughs> overlapped get owning face get is active equals false. I feel like there's a lot of extra code in here we don't need. <laughs> but that's what prototypes are for. <gasps> no path imbalance. Excellent. No! <laughs> uh... Where is that? This has no linked path node. But why? I bet... This is our right straight path face. I bet that that is the one that is disabled at first. No? How about at the very start? Nothing. Oh, these are not active. What? Oh, they're not active. Um, let's start all of these. Let's start the is active as true, right? Uh, faces. Right, changing it in the... Changing the code in the script is the lowest priority change. Whatever's in the hierarchy is going to stomp on whatever we type in there. So let's change it here. We'll go to each of our prefabs. I don't know if our no path face cares. I don't think it does care. I think it was 01 right. Hey, linked now. Good, good, good. So let's try and get a nice and crazy setup here. Well, I guess that's about as crazy as we can go. What's your problem here? So this has two, two possible path nodes. Ah, under and here. Well, we know we got a problem with this um, three three path setup with our caddy corner cubes, but it does seem like we're not getting any crazy good. That goes under. Let's try moving this guy back to an X of one. Okay. So 
What's going on down here? So there is only one path connecting. It's happy with that. It's happy with that one. Happy there. Okay, so let's try this. Oh. Huh. Now it seems to be working just fine. So it's its first time that it failed, right? Okay. But after the first rotate, everything plays happily. What's the state like in our first, with an unrotated setup over there? Only one connection. What do you have in your path nodes, buddy? It does have one possible path node. But it never attempted to validate that path node. Interesting. I think we just have to call validate path node at some point after all of the... I don't know, maybe we could just... Um... In the cube faces start? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, linked path node. Hey, hey. Yeah! Ha ha ha! Ouya Okay, so I did find one more bug. How can I test that? No. Like so. So you'll see that it's we've got a path node here and a single other path node. Oh, that's not connected, is it? I need to change that a little bit more. OK, now these are connected. Young. Dun, dun, dun. So you can see now our Whitling believes that he can squeeze through this corner of size zero, and that is not what we want to happen. So you'll notice that each of our path faces have a local up pointing outward from the cube. 
right? Yellow is the up local direction. Make sure when you're testing this out that you know the difference between the global and local rotation widget identifier thingies. So I do believe there's just one more check that we have to do, and that is if node A and node B are overlapping, we're going to get the up of their normals, right? We're going to get the up of each cube. And if those two ups are going in opposite directions, then we know that these... Um, these paths can never interact with each other. Ooh, so let's not even add it. Hmm. Is that a possibility? Uh, I just kind of want to put it in validate path nodes. Here's a path imbalance. I don't think we had any path imbalances. Oh, we did, we did. That's fine, that's totally fine. Check for cube or faces facing <laughs> in opposite directions. And we're going to use the dot product here. And what the dot product will allow us to do, um, if you have two vectors and you dot product them together, if the vectors are pointing in somewhat the same direction, it's going to be greater than zero. If they're pointing at exactly 90 degree angles from each other, it's going to be exactly zero. And if they're pointing opposite directions from each other, then it's going to be less than zero. So all we need to do is check to see if other get owning face transform dot up. And we're going to dot that with this get owning face transform dot up. And if it is less than zero, then this is inside of the possible path node links count equals one setup. So if they're facing in opposite directions, then the linked path node equals nothing, and we can return. And I think that this fix we can get rid of. We need to keep our path in balance. Our floating point error, we're going to keep this here just in case it ever shows up. If this error ever shows up, it means that we probably have some invalid cubes, or we have some invalid path nodes hanging out in the possible list. Let's try it. And let's see, how do we test this? Doom, doom, doom. Okay, so that's under here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. So I do believe that this is a pretty successful setup. The last thing that we need to do is
Well, we're definitely going to need to do some testing, but I can do that off stream. But what I'd like to do is set up another area. So I have negative two here. And then let's duplicate this cube. And we'll duplicate this cube. So the final trick is going to be this path here, where the Whitling can walk straight, 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 straight. And if we can get that setup working, it should, in theory, work with our L setup. I wonder if our current seed will work. I doubt it. We're going to have to... Um, Let's just turn all of these off. Oh, we, we need this debug path renderer. And then let's put these three cubes back at Z of zero for easy viewing purposes. And for these two cubes, I am not going to randomize them. I'm going to give all six of them, oh, let's do this with one, straight path faces. And hopefully, well, we could probably cheat pretty easily. Is that Y? Zero. X, zero. Yeah, they're definitely not lined up correctly. So let's move our cube. Eventually, we are going to want to 90. Yeah, there we go. We are going to want to be able to set the rotations of these things at will. But that's later. I just want to get this pathing path working. Maybe we'll start on corners after we get this crazy thing. Um, so Z is at negative 1, and X is at 0. Yeah, I thought so. So I believe that this is going to have, oh, it's going to have two valid nodes, isn't it? This has two valid nodes. I wonder, is it as simple as doing this? Oh boy. So let's make a found. And if either of these are found, we'll set this to true. We can say, if not found, then log an error for us. <clears throat> because on this four-way connected path here, shoot, I don't know. This might be a problem for another time. If this doesn't work, I think I'm going to call it for today. Yeah.
Ooh. Not even that is working. Huh. That only had one. That only had this one. This one's connected to two, which is totally wrong. That one's right. Okay. Does this have something to do with my using these starting face prefabs? Cube face spawner. Get the current face if randomize. And get a random guy. Otherwise, we just pull it directly from the starting face prefabs. We instantiate the face. We name it. Set the parent, that's all working fine. Okay. Well, everybody, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully next time, maybe later tonight or sometime tomorrow, we'll be able to get that crazy cross thing working. And once we have that working, we'll be able to move on from there. So I hope, hope you all have a good day. My name is Billy Lemonzest, and this is the Whitlings Prototype.